This morning when I woke up, I decided that I would just film my very simple little morning routine. So first thing I do every morning is make our bed. And the main reason why I make my bed is because my husband actually works right in our bedroom. His, um, I say his office, it's not really even an office, it's just a desk with a computer is in our room. And so I feel like during the week when that's where he's going to be sitting, it's just nice to have a made bed, put together bedroom. Um, on the weekends, I don't always make the bed, but during the week, it's always the first thing I do when I get up is make the bed. Um, and then next, I'm just heading into my bathroom. I don't have a very, like, a clearly by, <laughs> you guys see my hair and my makeup. It's never very elaborate by any stretch of the imagination, but I do like to put myself together. I just feel better about myself throughout the day if I just have my hair put together. And this little style I've been doing for... I don't know, probably way too long, but a little braid into a ponytail and then using a claw clip. It just gets my hair out of my face, which I like because I spend so much of my time in the kitchen cooking and also with the baby. I feel like if my hair is down, he pulls it. And when I put him in my back carrier, if my hair is down, he'll pull it. So I like to have my hair up out of my face, but I feel like this little extra braid and then with the clip it just makes me at least look like I am put together even though it's like a five minute hairstyle. I've never been good at hair. My daughter's always asking me to do different styles on her hair. I can't French braid. I can't curl. I just, I don't know. Hair has never been my thing but this has been kind of my style for probably like a year now where it's just really, really easy. I can do a, I can do a simple braid, but like French braiding or like, I don't know, certain hairstyles are just not my thing. So good thing I have lots of boys and I don't have to really worry about hair. And then for my makeup, I just do something very simple as well. Now my makeup, I kind of have a combination of things here from Tubes & Co, which is a natural makeup company. I can link them down below. And then also some homemade things. So a lot of times I make my own makeup. I currently have Tubes & Co foundation and eyeshadow. I've made both of those in the past. It just kind of depends on, um, I don't know, different times. I sometimes will make it. Sometimes I will replace it with a store-bought natural makeup. I do have my homemade lipstick that I'm putting on today. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I have the recipe on my blog, but I pretty much always use my homemade lip lipstick. It's just the only one that I've ever found that I actually like. So yeah, I have a combination of the two and um, it just kind of depends on the mood whenever I am run out of something if I decide to remake it or just buy it. All right, so next I'm heading into the kitchen and one of the first things I do every morning is sit by the stink and basically chug two glasses of water. I like it to be about room temperature. Sometimes I put lemon in it and sometimes I just drink it plain, but I like to drink water just to get myself hydrated for the day. All right, so the next thing that I do in the morning is start breakfast. This is pretty much the first thing that I get going just because, you know, everyone's hungry when they wake up and the quicker I get it going, the happier everybody is. So we recently um, had our fair where our kids have showed and auctioned off their hogs, but each kid had two hogs and so we decided to keep part of one of the hogs and I got half of a hog and sausage and bacon. I know there's lots of other great cuts to a hog, but we currently have a freezer full of beef with all of our steaks and roast and stew meat and all of those things. So I decided for the hog, I just wanted a bunch of sausage and bacon. You can never have too much sausage and bacon in my opinion. And so this morning I am making a sausage and onion, hash brown, egg, thing. I don't know what you want to call it, but I'm starting off by browning up some of our sausage. It's so fun whenever you have your own meat that you raised. We got these pigs when they were pretty small and we have raised them and now we are eating the meat and it's just 
I don't know. I know it's just, it's just fun whenever you can be kind of living off of and surviving off of the things that you've raised or things that you've grown. And so first of the sausage that we are making today. And um, as I'm doing this recording, we already did eat it and it was really good. So I'm excited now that we have a whole freezer full of our fresh sausage and bacon from a pig that we raised ourselves. So I'm adding in some onion into this and then I'm going to shred up some potatoes with just like a cheese grater. And then I'm gonna fry those in some pork lard. So whenever we got our sausage and bacon, I also got a big tub of lard. And you guys know that I love to fry a lot of things in my lard. We use it in our Fry Daddy whenever we make french fries. I use it when I fry chicken and now I'm using it here to fry up some hash browns. I'll actually keep this big tub in my refrigerator and just pull it out as we need it. And whenever I use it to fill up my Fry Daddy, I will use the same um, lard for several fryings. I'll keep it in my refrigerator. I'll keep it for weeks actually before I have to refill it. So I do personally find that whenever you have a good source of meat and you use the fat from that meat, whether it be tallow or lard, that it is the best protein, the best fat. It's so great for you. And so we are going to be using this for quite some time and be frying everything in it. It makes everything nice and crispy, has a great flavor, and I just love the benefits that lard has. I know that some people disagree with that, but I find that animal fat is one of the best fats to use. So whether it is lard or tallow, that is something that we love to use. I added in some onions with the sausage and just continued to brown it. When it was close to done, I did add a little bit of bacon grease into the sausage because it was a little bit dry and I'm gonna be frying eggs right inside of this same cast iron skillet. I won't throw away the fat off the bacon. I'll save that grease and that's what we use to fry our eggs in. Or like I said, I'm adding it into here just to add a little bit more grease and then I'm just cracking the egg straight into the sausage and onions, scrambling those up and then I'm just serving this all together, the sausage, eggs, and onions with some hash browns on the side. All right, so today after breakfast and commonly just during the summertime when we have a more laid back schedule, I try to find a different kind of job or cleaning, or organizing thing to do each day just to stay on top of things. And today it is, I'm in my boys room and I'm decluttering toys. I'm actually gonna go out to our sunroom and also in our basement. This is something that I find being a mom of many little kids is something that I have to do all the time. I don't know where all the stuff comes from. I had this conversation with my sister and it's just part of being a mom is just going through and getting rid of stuff. Whenever you have a large family, or probably not even, just whenever you just, you're, you're going to different places, I don't know, it's birthday parties, kids coming home from grandma's house, going to um, parades and fairs, somehow, some way, the house is constantly getting things in. And if I'm not constantly getting things back out, it gets too full and there gets too many things in here. And I know that there's probably even some things here that I'm getting rid of that the kids play with and they might figure out later that I got rid of and ask where that went. But for me, it is more worth it to have less things in my home. When I start finding toys like scattered all throughout, like pieces of things, in, you know, outside and the toys inside. And, you know, I find something on the countertop or I, I don't know, just pieces of different toys all over. It starts stressing me out. And it's just, I have found that that's just extra stress that I don't need. And if I just get rid of it, it's not stressful. And so I, I wouldn't call myself a minimalist, but I do like to stay minimal on the amount of things that I have in my home. And so whenever the toy bin is overflowing, and like I said, there's like pieces of toys, like I'm in my room and I find a piece of a toy and then I know the rest of the toy is somewhere else in the house, that's just, it's time for that toy to go. And so I today am spending a little bit of time filling up a couple trash bags to donate 
donate some toys to our local thrift shop because we just have too much right now. And I have just found that having less is definitely so much more for us. It's easier for the kids to manage their toys. It's easier than for them to find what they want. They play better with the toys that they have when they have less because they can actually find the pieces. And it just keeps me happy knowing that there aren't a mill. I don't know, just when I see a toy box like overflowing stuffed with toys, I'm just like, ah, we have too much in the house. We have to get rid of stuff. And I know that in the next couple of months, there will be more things coming in. I don't know where it all comes from, but somehow things are constantly coming in and nobody in my home really like gets rid of things besides my daughter. She's constantly is getting rid of things and wanting to donate things, but no one else really does that. And so if I don't like go in and I have to kind of sneak it because the kids see certain things, they're like, oh wait, that was mine. Or I, I love this or, you know, but I know it's things that they don't really play with. And so I have to be the person that goes in, gets rid of things. And this is just a constant thing for me. I'm constantly putting bags of toys in my car to bring to the local thrift shop, but don't worry, they still have plenty and they will be getting plenty more from who knows where, but this is just something that I have to constantly do just to keep the house clean and put together and keep me from being overly stressed. All right guys, I wanna take a quick break to tell you about today's video sponsor, Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink with everything you need and nothing you don't. I have talked about Element here on my channel lots of times. My entire family is obsessed with this drink. It is so good, even the kids love it. And I love it because it doesn't have any junk added in. There's no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients. It is gluten-free and it has no fillers. It is very important to replenish electrolytes, especially this time of year when you're spending a lot of times outside sweating, working in the garden, playing ball, just running around or just doing any of the things outside. So I am striving to give my family each a cup of Element every day. And for the little ones, I typically just give them a half of a packet, not because it's even too much for them, but because that's the way that they like it. And so we're constantly going through the look at all the flavors and deciding which ones they want. Some of our favorites are the raspberry sauce, the watermelon salt, and then my favorite is the grapefruit salt. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleepiness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiencies. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets where you can try all the different flavors or share with a friend with any order. You can get yours at drinkelement.com slash our house. This deal is only available through my link. So you must go to drinklmnt.com slash our oily house, or you can use the link down in my description box below. All right. So the next thing on my list today, and this is right before lunchtime, I'm going outside and I'm getting some flowers. We have so many cut flowers. Um, our zinnias are doing so great. This is my first year really growing flowers and having like a great production of flowers. There's just so many out there and I just love it so much. And next year I have big plans of growing a lot more varieties of different flowers. This year it was kind of like my sisters that are all like expert flower growers are like, hey, you can't mess this one up. Take this pack of zinnias, sprinkle them out and just like water them a little bit and you will have flowers. So I was like, all right, I I can do that. And they were right. These were so easy to grow, but now I feel way more confident in knowing that like next year I can probably plant lots of different flowers. I have lots of things on my list because all of my sisters have different flowers growing and we're always showing each other our different flower arrangements that we're making and oh man, I can't wait to plant so many more things next year. But for now, this is what I have and I just I absolutely love having fresh flowers on the table and we have them in the bathroom. We have them on the coffee table and on the mantle. We just have vases of flowers everywhere. And my daughter is pretty good at keeping up with when 
old flowers are dying to get new ones in there. And so today we're out here and just getting some more arrangements to bring inside. It's just, oh man, I, I keep thinking now that it's August and people are talking about back to school. And I know the pools are closing soon. I'm like, no, 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 no. It is still full blown summer. We are going to have fresh flowers in our house for hopefully a couple more months at least. And it's still warm outside. We have some, we still have a lot of summer plans left. We have a big lake day that we're doing with my parents and we're going to go skiing and water tubing and then we have another like family um, get together that we have planned that's going to be on the lake as well with some of my in-laws and we have a couple more pool days like I am going to embrace summer till it's over and I have to say one of my absolute favorite thing about summer is having fresh flowers in the house at all times and I already am mourning like thinking about that being gone but I, I love fall and I love winter but I'm not even going to think about those seasons until we get there because there, there are just so many special things about each season and thinking about like the pumpkins and you know the the Christmas time season with kids I love it all but summer is definitely my favorite and I am going to stay in summer until I absolutely have to be forced into the next season. <laughs> All right, so today for lunch, I am making some chicken noodle soup. Speaking of seasons, I know that soups are definitely more of a wintertime thing, but we eat them year round. And that is one thing that I do love about winter is that you can make these cozy soups and stews and roast and your family's not coming in from like sweating and being by the pool and being like, oh, soup. <laughs> but I had a big um, mason jar of broth in the refrigerator. And when I saw the broth, I'm like, what am I gonna make? So I decided on chicken noodle soup and I pulled a chicken straight out of the freezer to put in my Instapot. That is one thing that I do love doing in the summertime. I don't have to use my stove at all, or sorry, I don't have to use my oven at all. I can throw a frozen chicken straight in my Instapot, add a little bit of water, some seasoning, and that'll be ready in less than an hour. And it's the best for soups. I don't necessarily like eating chicken straight out of the Instapot like I don't know, like plain. I definitely prefer to roast them for that. But for soup, it's great because when it comes out, it's falling off the bone. It's nice and um tender. It's all nice and shredded. It makes great for soups or even like a casserole. So for my um, chicken noodle soup, I am cutting up some onions and carrots and I'm going to saute that in some butter and then let that chicken just cook in my Instapot. Now while my chicken is cooking. I'm on to another cleaning project today. It is that time of year when we have ants coming in the house. I don't know about you or where you live or if it's just a thing in the Midwest, but there's always a month or so out of the year, I guess it's August, I don't know, where ants are like everywhere. You just find them like in your kitchen and like for us, they're in our sunroom. So I'm making a homemade ant spray with water, peppermint and clove essential oil. And I am going to clean really good around the door frame coming in from our sunroom, all on the countertops, basically all the areas where I've been seeing the ants. I'm cleaning with a water vinegar mixture. I read that vinegar is also good at deterring ants. So I'm just gonna clean everything really well. I mean, obviously with little fingers and we eat lots of food out on our sunroom, whether we should or not, whatever, that's what we do. It's right off our kitchen. So we're constantly going in and out of the store with like sticky hands and crumbs dropping everywhere. So that's clearly why the ants are coming in right here. They're finding food. So I'm just gonna clean really well right here um, on the floor, on the countertops, cabinets, backsplash in the kitchen because we've been seeing them there all along this door frame. And then I'm going to vacuum really well out on the sunroom um, because we, like I said, we're eating out here. There's lots of crumbs. Clearly that's a problem with ants. So I'm just gonna vacuum and clean really well. And then I'm gonna take this homemade ant spray and spray it all along the door frames, along the window cells, up along the countertops. And I love making my own because with little kids around, I feel like there's never a good time to spray a like chemical filled 
ant spray or spider spray or anything. That's why I make all of my own like pest control things. I have recipes on my blog for like bed bug spray, like all the different things because I don't like having to use conventional sprays with kids around because right now, especially I have a crawling baby who's gonna be crawling all over the floor. And so I feel a lot more comfortable using just a few simple ingredients like essential oils, vinegar. Um, I know I have a wasp spray and that has Dawn dish soap in it. We had a bunch of wasps out on the sunroom earlier in the summer, so we made it a wasp spray. It worked really well. And so um, if you're interested in any type of like pest control natural sprays, I do have them all on my blog. I'll link them down below for you because I do find that they work really well and then I don't have to worry about kids getting different things in their mouth or, you know, if it's in the kitchen around food and plates and all that kind of stuff. All right, so after getting all of that taken care of, the chicken is done. And so I'm just opening up my Instapot, letting that cool. That's like the biggest thing about making chicken in the Instapot is that it takes a long time for the chicken to cool. So I'm gonna let that cool while I work on the rest of the soup. I'm putting in a um, bag of just penny noodles. Ideally, I would have egg noodles for this but we don't have any right now so I'm just using some regular like penny pasta. I'm adding in my jar of bone broth that I had made earlier in the week and I'm just gonna let this simmer to let the noodles cook and let the carrots and onions to continue to cook. I did add in a little bit more butter. I just find that extra butter and soup is so good and it makes it taste more like the canned like chicken noodle soup like Campbell's chicken noodle soup when you add in a lot of butter. I'm also adding in some salt and pepper, some parsley, a little bit of garlic powder and then I'm going back to my chicken and it is still way too hot. I started to kind of like take it off the bone and I was burning my hands and so I decided to take Okay, another break from the chicken and go and do some dishes. I'm washing in my Instapot. Now I did have a little bit of broth in my Instapot from cooking the chicken, so just some meat stock. So I'm straining the bones off and pouring that meat stock straight into my soup because I need a little bit more broth anyway. And that's nice and nutritious with that um, chicken that I have. So I definitely wanted to add that back into the soup. And then I'm just going to clean my Instapot. My biggest tip with cleaning an Instapot is always taking that little silicone ring out of the top and washing that separate and keeping it out of the Instapot because that's what keeps all of the like flavor or like scent locked in. And whenever you go to make something else, I like to make sure that that's like separate and it cleans better than like leaving it in there. So anyway, little tip, when I make yogurt, I just keep that thing completely out because if you leave that on the Instapot, it definitely, puts that like chickeny flavor into your yogurt, which I've done before, it's really gross. And so you don't actually need that ring to make yogurt because the Instapot doesn't need to come to pressure. So I just keep that separate and only put it on when I need to make something that needs to come to pressure. All right, so the chicken is definitely cooled down more and I'm getting all the pieces off the bone. You can see how easily it just all falls off the bone when I make it in my Instapot. And then I'm just pouring the chicken into the rest of the soup and letting it simmer for just a couple of minutes to kind of put, mingle all the flavors together. And then this is ready to serve. All right, so after lunch today, I am making a meatloaf during nap time because I am going over to visit my younger sister who had the baby last week. I went over there already a couple of times. I just can't stand it. <laughs> when my sisters have newborns, I'm just like, how often can I come over and like just peek at the baby and snuggle the baby? Newborns change way too fast to only see them once a week. I just can't, uh, they're just so sweet. I love newborns and the more I can get over there, the better. And I feel like bringing food is like the best excuse. I text her, I'm like, hey, I can bring you guys over dinner, which is my way of saying, hey, I'm coming over to steal your baby. <laughs> and so I am making some meatloaf and some oven fries for her and her husband. Um, and then gonna go over there after nap time. So for my meatloaf, I'm just mixing together some, um, ground beef 
in some onion and peppers, some different seasonings. I'm adding in some breadcrumbs and some eggs. I'm making them a two pound meatloaf in hopes that this will be a several meals for them since they're just two eaters at their house. I thought they could warm up one and that could be dinner and maybe lunch and then maybe use the other one later. I don't know, freeze it, whatever. But figured more more the better. Yeah, my younger sister did end up having to have a C-section and so she's having a little bit of a harder time with healing. She's doing really well. Everything went very well, but um, you know, it's a little bit more of a, of a healing process when you have a C-section than it is when you have a vaginal delivery. And so I wanna make sure that she has plenty of food to really keep off her feet and stay resting and so that everything heals right. Um, she's doing great and this is her first baby and the baby's nursing so well. And so everything is going, going really, really well for her. And um, when I went over there this afternoon, my older sister that just had her baby came, so we had both babies together, and I have always dreamed of twins. I mean, every single time when I find out it's just one, I'm always like, oh, like I just always wanted to be two, like secretly, like man, it would be so fun if there was two. And so, who knows, I'll probably never have twins, but this right here is the closest thing to twins I'll probably ever get is having two a nephew and a niece born just within less than two weeks apart. They were only a day apart in pregnancy, but because one of my sisters went so late, they're actually 10 days apart. But having two newborns together, it's just, there's nothing better. So anyway, this afternoon after nap time, I'm bringing in meatloaf and some food over to my sisters, and I'm gonna snuggle two babies and just basically be in heaven. Now, I never get to snuggle them too long because Jacob is a little jealous and he's still a baby too and he needs me, but just like being around those two babies, it's just it's nothing better. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As I said, I'll have everything that I'm talking about, recipes and um, the different pest control things all linked down in the description box below. So if you guys want leaks to anything, I will have that down for you. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I get up new videos every single week. Mm -hmm.